Hi, my name is Lady Mar. I'm the wet clay instructor here at the Firestone Art Studio and Cafe. And in this video, I will be showing you how to make this set of coasters out of wet clay using transfer paper. It's a really cool um, project. You also get to choose which transfer paper design you like. And we will also be glazing them for you as well. So throughout this video, I'm going to be showing you what is included in the kit, what you will need at home to do this, as well as a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to do them. So let's first start with the kits. So I'm going to go ahead and put these aside. So here is our hand-built coaster set kit. Inside, you're going to find four four inch squares of transfer paper. In this case, this is the cactus one that we're gonna be using today. You're gonna be finding a pound and a half of clay wrapped in plastic so it stays moist, as well as coaster templates. So that's a four inch coaster. It will shrink a bit in size during the firing process, but not too much, it's about I would say a quarter of an inch to a third of an inch. And I'll show you that by placing one here so you can see where it shrinks just a tad. And you'll also be getting a toothpick here that is what we're gonna be using to cut out the clay from the slab. You'll also need at home a few items. First would be some cloth. Here we're just using linen. It's a painter's drop cloth, but you can also use anything that is cotton based. Uh, the reason we use cotton is because it will absorb a bit of the moisture in the clay as well as it won't allow it to stick to the hard surface that you're working on. Right. You will also need a rolling pin or anything that you can use to roll out the clay. Anything from a glass to something like this would work just fine. We are not rolling out a ton of clay. And you will also need something that is about a quarter of an inch. So you can see I'm using these yardsticks. And they're about a quarter of an inch in width. And the reason we're using these and a pair of them is so that we'll place them on either side of the clay when we're rolling out the clay so that we have a nice thick even thickness throughout right and anything will work that's about a quarter of an inch either a book magazine anything like that maybe we'll even use pencils that kind of thing you'll also need a sponge with a little bit of water in it like so any clean sponge will do. This is what we're gonna use to uh, adhere the decal to the clay. You also may need a blow dryer. This is optional only because uh, we want to dry out the clay a little bit before we start manipulating it and working with it just so that it's easier for us to work with and it doesn't leave as many indents and scratches in the clay. Um, so you can do that either by blow drying the clay or just waiting about 30 minutes to an hour for the clay to be quite dry. So I'm going to go ahead and start unraveling my clay here. Like so, placing that aside. And I'm going to start to roll it out. The way I like to roll out is going in one direction for a few passes and then turning the clay so that we get a nice even size of clay instead of one really long size. So once I have it like this, I'm going to go ahead and rotate it and then go in again like so. Done that. I'm going to go ahead and flip it upside down as well. And then 
go on its side. good to me and you'll notice that once you reach that quarter of an inch thickness it's really not going to let you roll out any more clay so that's how you know that you are done so now I'm going to go ahead and take a card like this it's just a regular plastic card any will work this is a Firestone gift card um, and what we're going to use this for is to further compress the clay like this, and what this is going to do is smooth out the top surface as well as if there are any air bubbles in here, we're gonna compress them out. So, like so. I'm just passing through. So, this is the point where I would go ahead and blow dry the clay or leave it out to dry for a bit. So, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and blow dry it. I want to remove the rolling pin and yardstick out of the way. And go ahead and blow dry this a bit. Okay, so here I have my slab that I have blow dried for about five minutes. And now I can go ahead and start cutting out the template. This is our coaster template. You want four of them. This may not be enough for all four, right? So what we're going to do is cut out, I think it's going to fit three, and then re-wedge the clay a bit and go in and roll out another slab and make that fourth one. So I'm just going in and tracing with the side of my toothpick. You don't want to go ahead and just straight in with the toothpick because what's going to happen is one, it might break, or two, if you do make a mistake, it's harder to fix if it's um, like that. So here we go. There's one. Do one over here. So we're just tracing along the edge, like so. And then one more here, and you can get them pretty close, like so. That's okay. So yeah, so here we're gonna get three, but we have enough clay to re-wedge and make another slab. Okay, so there's all three. I'm gonna go ahead and start to take all of these out by just running my tool along that area that I already traced. And I'll cut a little bit on this edge here so I can start peeling away the clay I don't want and taking out the clay I do want. Like so. So there's one right there. There's another one. Okay, there's two. And so here we have our three and then enough here to make a fourth one. What I'm going to do is start compressing all this clay down in on itself. What I'm trying to do is minimize the amount of air bubbles that are in the clay. 
you don't want to completely like stay this part there's definitely air right there and I don't want to just fold it in on itself because then there's going to be a big air bubble so what I'm going to do instead is start to press on all sides like so until I have a nice round ball like so what I'm going to do in my hand is start to also compress it. What I'd like to do is just press it between my palms, like so, and also slam it against my palms. So I'll take it up against it, like so, and then rotate it. What this is doing is moving the clay enough so that if there are air bubbles inside, they'll come to the surface. That's pretty good. Looks like so. I'm gonna go ahead and roll out that last bit of clay that we need. And you can use your yardsticks or whatever you're using to determine the width. I have a pretty good idea of it. So I won't be using it right now, but if you don't and you go too thin, that's okay. You can easily just recompress it and roll it out again. If you find that once you start rolling it out like this, it starts to start to crack a lot. Like mine is only cracking along the edges and that's fine. If it's starting to crack a lot, that's when you can take a damp sponge and just lightly press it just to rehydrate it a bit. That's just because it's getting a little too dry, right? All right, so that looks pretty good to me. I'm just gonna go ahead and compress it again with my card like so okay so now I have enough for my final coaster go ahead and trace 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 Like so. Lift it up. Go ahead and trace again. Okay. And then all this extra clay here, you can go ahead and wrap it if you'd like in the plastic that it came in and return it back to the studio and we can properly recycle it. So here we have all four of our coasters. So they have some pretty jagged edges at the moment, and that's all right. We're gonna go ahead and clean them up. So I like to do that just with um, the edges of my fingers. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up like so, and start to just smooth out the surface just with my finger. And because if I were to be adding water, at least to this clay that's still really moldable, it's gonna happen, it's gonna get too soft and sticky and hard to work with. The only time I would recommend adding water to this is when it's starting to crack a lot and that means it's really not, doesn't have enough water to bind it. And that's when you can just run a damp sponge along the edges of it instead. Here, here it kind of pokes out a bit so I'm gonna go ahead and take my toothpick and just take that extra part off that I don't need. Like so. Go ahead and do that, like so. Nice and smooth surface here. And just cleaning off the edges. Sometimes they get a little bumpy, just the way that you cut it out. So this way I'm going to kind of reshape it to the shape I want. There it is, nice and smooth. You see this one's a lot smoother than the rest of them. So I'm going to do that to all of them and as well as the bottom of them. Just like so. Mine has the texture of the cloth on the bottom, which I'm fine with. I kind of like because it kind of has some, some texture to hold on to once it's on a surface right but this is a great time to write your name on your piece you want to write your 
um, the same name on all four. That way we can easily kind of keep track of them throughout the firing process. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and write my name just with a toothpick. There it is. And lay it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all of them. Once you've written your name on all of them and smooth them out to your preference, however you like them to be, then we can move on to using the decals. You want a nice top surface that's smooth as well because that's going to make the decal much easier to adhere to and get a nice clean transfer of design. And if you can't seem to get it nice and smooth, you can either use the card again on top of it. So the card just swiping it over it like that. Or if it's too dry, then you can use a damp sponge. Okay. Right. Pretty good to me there. And do all of these. You can see how much it just smooths out just using your fingers. like so. All right. Um, yeah, this one's a little too square there. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take two of them just to show you how to apply the decal correctly or the transfer transfer paper correctly. I'm going to take this one and this one. So I'll put these two aside. So now we have both of our coasters here. Again, just move out the bottom part and write my name on this one. All right, so my coasters are here. Let me grab my transfer paper. And so you will have a choice of four different designs. I'll show you each. So the one we'll be using today is this really cute cactus design. So there's a bunch of different cacti, I guess, um, which is really cute. We also have this little like rose bush one, which is really cute. And it has a bunch of different details, which is really sweet. As well as this bee one, which like is super cute. I love this one too. And again, they, they have tons of detail in them. It's really cool. And then this one, which is kind of like this palm design. It's like really cool. So yeah, you have a few different options to choose from. So once you place your order, you can let us know which one you want and we'll give you four pre-cut pieces like so. So this is what it looks like. One side you can see is significantly darker than the other. This one's kind of gray, this one's black. So the black side is the part that you're gonna put down on the coaster. If you were to use it this way, it would not transfer. It actually transfer onto the sponge that you're using. So you wanna make sure that you're putting it face down so that black is touching the clay. All right, and these are each cut so that they have enough so you can properly use them so that you're not actually kind of running out of transfer paper. So we have both our pieces here. So what I would recommend doing is wherever you are planning on working with these pieces, you want to leave them here for about a few hours so that, until they're quite dry. Because you don't want to move these too much, especially the ones with 
the transfer paper just because it might end up smudging. Okay, it's getting a nice smooth surface on each of these so I can start transferring. Another recommendation I have of using these transfer papers is it's best to place them on and start from the center and slowly move out to the edges just so that you have a nice flat surface. If you start on one end, what you might end up happening once you get to the other is that the transfer paper will crease and so you end up with a crease in your design. And you also, once you get it on there, you want to leave it on there for a while until it's nice and dry and then peel it. That way you don't get any smudging. So I'm gonna take my sponge, it has just a tad bit of water. I'll show you how much water it has. So I just squeezed it and just a little bit of water came out. That's what you kind of want. You want just a little bit of water. And I'm gonna take my transfer paper, place it onto my coaster, really making sure it's in the center so that I'm getting the entire design right there. I'm gonna hold on to it on one end and start in the center pressing like so. And you see where it's starting to get wet there and then slowly moving my way out to the edges of the transfer paper. Okay. Like so. Now I'm not gonna touch that for a few minutes until it starts to get dry. You'll notice once it starts to get dry because this will, right now it's quite shiny and it'll start to go matte, right? So I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. I'm gonna place it there in the center. Make sure I have enough room on each edge, okay? And then start in the center and work my way out, like so. There we are. There are two designs. You'll notice you'll get some black stuff on your sponge. That's just the glaze from the transfer itself, and it's totally fine. It washes off really easily. Okay. We're just gonna wait a few minutes for these to dry so that I can peel them and show you. But in the meantime, I'll show you these designs again. They're super cute. And we're going to be able to glaze them for you as well. So you see they're all quite glossy. So they're gonna go into the kiln once just to bisque fire and then a second time with a clear, clear coat on it so that they're nice and glossy like so. It's really great. And so you'll get a set of four with one design like this. So you'll get to choose between any of these four designs to make your coasters and they're super cute. They make great gifts and just like little personal touches to your everyday life, you know? So let's test this. It's quite dry now. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel this one off. You wanna peel it off very gently, like so. This is quite satisfying. And there you are. There is our decal. That's nice, there's no smudging there. I'm happy with it. So I'll leave it here for a bit just so that it dries without it being you know, interfered by anything. And then once it's dry enough, it will be dry to the touch within about three to four days. And within a week, it should be dry enough to go into the kiln. Um, within that time, you can bring it over to the studio and we'll fire it for you. It is a two week turnaround because we'll be firing it once, glazing it and then firing it again. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see your lovely coaster sets coming into the studio soon. So have a great day and happy holidays.